Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. What is this? I don't even have a full screen myself. Welcome to another episode of Live from the Casa. There it is. Vivre de la Casa, episode five. Imagine that. Good afternoon, Steve. I'm going to call Cap Mike here in a few seconds. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you some news and notes. I look like I'm stoned. I know I am not. I uh, just got out of the shower. I got, you know, I, I took a shower for y'all. That's the truth. I took a shower for y'all. So y'all ought, ought to be really, really freaking happy um, because I was rushing. I'm trying to make up a, a smoked turkey. I'm supposed to do a whole, I'm trying to do a whole bunch of stuff. We have some great guests. We'll, we're going to start off talking to Captain Mike of Tackle Webs, Captain Mike Ortigo, my boy. We'll talk to him for a little bit. Well, then we're going to go straight to the Encyclopedia of Bass. So if you have a question about bass fishing or anything, the, this man will be able to tell it to you, and that is Ken Duke. So we'll talk, talk to him. And then last but not least, you'll see a pre-recorded interview. High five, Tim. Um, a pre-recorded interview with... Todd Con, uh, Castledine, and he's a YouTuber, and uh, we talked, we actually did this really late last night, I mean really late last night, and um, the interview goes for about 35, 40 minutes, and truthfully, he and I spent another 40 minutes after the show, after I was done recording, talking about a whole bunch of stuff that was industry related, that hopefully I can interject later on when it doesn't seem like... Uh, I'm talking about the stuff that he talked to me about. <laughs> Hello from North Carolina. Hello from Johnstown, New York. Hey, David. Hey, Jack. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are having a blessed day. Um, I'm going to turn some things off over here and get onto Skype real fast. And, oh, hey, Steve. Heading home from the surf. Fishing with Leo today. Slow day. Sorry to hear that. It was a slow day for us, too. We, I went fishing with uh, Les this morning. Slow day for us. I think Les still out fishing me. I'm not 100% sure, but it was great. I got to say, the one thing about Les, Les can throw a Cinco better than anyone I've ever met in my life. So I'm going to try to get, oh, look at this, Miss Fish in Florida Radio and the His A. I don't even know if that's right, Marcella, and I feel really old saying that. But hope you're doing well. Hopefully you're at home and relaxing. I, I actually saw Marcella, I've seen you quite a few times this week now that I'm thinking about it. And I got a picture too. So I'm going to, what was that? One moment, my thing said, I'm going to, oh, this is weird. My Siri just went in up. What a stupid thing that is. Okay. Right now I'm going to play, play a quick commercial. Um, and then when we get back. Uh, we'll have Captain Mike Gore to go. So hold. I'm gonna actually. Why not? I'm gonna play the Tackle Webs commercial. So hold on. Back in a few seconds. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. Well, I can't get a hold of Mike, and I got a fly in the house that's killing me. Hey, Jason. Hey, yeah, Stuart. Les is, Les is a pretty good darn Cinco fisherman. I'm not joking. Hey, Tally Ray. Hope you're doing well. Nips. Hello from the Atlanta area. Hope you're doing well. Um, I want to tell you some some news in the industry. 
I think next week, if you know somebody that has uh, a child or someone that's graduating, I'd like to know their name because I'd like to give them a shout out because this is a weird time where I mean, kids aren't getting to to graduate and if you if they're going through the 12th grade we're going through we're going to do a graduation on friday for i don't want to say who because in case they're watching this or happen to watch us we're doing a parade for them and so if you know someone that's in your family or something and you want to shout out to say happy birthday or happy birthday happy graduation by all means get a hold of us facebook us do whatever send us an email and just tell us who it is if you want to do the personal thing on here and do it on episode six, you're more than welcome to. I'll give you my my uh, Skype stuff, and you can call in and do that. So I just want to make sure we 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 say happy happy graduation or congratulations to these students that are that are uh, graduating and not getting the full effect of what graduation is, especially since this is like the last. This is supposed to be the best time of their lives, the last few months of school. I mean, remember when you were the last few months of school? This was the best time of your life. No more school, you thought. Some of, some people go to college. The smart people go to college. The other people go work for your family and then get in trouble, like Lunker Louie and, and people like that. Yeah. I, I, so next week, Dan, here's the deal. Next week, I want you to get on here. You can call in here and let's say, let's say congratulations to Lunker Louie. So there you, there you have it. Uh, next, we need to make sure we say thank you to all the first responders and veterans and, and active military people. My nephew went into, which I was told to make sure I said this right, my nephew Jake is in, uh, just started ranger school just two days ago. And uh, I'm the whole family is just so proud of him. I mean, um, to where Jake was several years ago, uh, if you want to know a really funny story, um, years ago, Marcella had like a, a gang of, of friends up at Fish on Fire. I mean, like six or eight girlfriends. I think I think Carla was there and her sister and a whole bunch of people. Every one better looking than the next. I mean, just a gorgeous set of women. And Jake literally thought at like 11 or 12 years old, I had to ca I called Marcella. This is a true story. I called Marcella on the way home. Jake actually thought he had a chance with Marcella and all of these great looking girls. And he was like 10 or 11 or 12. I don't even know how old he was, but it was, it was just that damn fly is going to make me pissed off. It was just awesome. Uh, it was just awesome. So, and to have him, you know, being part of the ranger, being a ranger and, uh, you know, it just was, it just was awesome. So uh, I'm just very proud of him, and I'm proud of everything he hit. he's become as a, a young man. And and uh, so so next, so we need to make sure that we make sure we say thank you to our first responders and all the other people too. So uh, do that and, and and do it. The next, we need to say happy birthday to our boy who used to take me fishing all the time. Now he doesn't. See that freaking fly. Uh, Captain Tom Van Horn had his 65th birthday this week. So happy birthday to our boy, Captain Tom. Captain Tom, it was used to be part of, uh, it was a, still is a major part of our gumbo cook-off. And uh, I'm sure, you know, he's just one of the best dudes in the world. He and I have gotten some big fish in, in our times fishing. Some big, big fish all the way. So uh, happy birthday to him. And then some news, if you didn't see it, Aaron Martins got the stitches out of his head that afternoon. He's out there fishing. So I think things are, I don't think uh, he's out of the woods yet. I think he's going to have to do some, some chemo. I plan on reaching out to him. I'm hoping that maybe we can have him. I can do a pre-record. Now that I know how to pre-record uh, some interviews, there's a good chance that I will get some other people on here and do pre-record and just show you what we do. Happy birthday, Stuart. So happy birthday to Stuart too. So I hope. I hope you still have Aaron and Shaw in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I'm going to end this. I'm not going to end this. I'm going to put another commercial up. Let me put hot and breezy here in Central Florida. We were supposed to have a. We were supposed to have rain this afternoon too, so I've got things lined up for episode six. But today, right now, we're going to try to get a hold of our boy Ken Duke, and then um, 
he's he's like the best. So I'm going to put another commercial up. When we get back, hopefully we'll have Ken Duke. So hold on. Introducing Shimano DC Braking. Digital control will provide trouble-free casting to all anglers. DC will greatly improve the casting and therefore the fishing experience for anglers of all skill levels. Make long, accurate casts regardless of wind speed or direction. DC Brake provides trouble-free casting with a wide range of lures by simply adjusting the external dial. Even challenging casts are now within reach for all anglers. The newest innovation in braking systems, Shimano DC Brake. Okay, very proud to have my next guest. I call him my fishing buddy. He knows more about bass fishing than anyone you will ever meet in your life. Ever meet. He is the Kencyclopedia of bass, is what most people call him. I call him Kenneth Allen Duke, PhD MD of bass. Uh, Ken, I can't hear you. You're, I think your speaker, your your Skype isn't working. Your volume isn't working on Skype. I I should take a picture of that that face right now. You, ha <laughs> I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Up. Oh, I think. Well, he's gonna try me back. Hold on. Actually, you want to know what? I can try him. Let me see if this helps at all. I'm ringing Ken Duke again. Ken was in a conference call of all things before he did it. He texted me, and it, that's why I ran a second commercial because uh, I saw it and uh, and I was I was confused. Uh, yes, today I was with Les, and he put me on my personal best on personal best bass on Conway today. I mean, it was a stud. It was a whole one and a half pounds. <laughs> on a brand new duo realis uh boostar uh swim bait if you haven't seen those those are new yeah i like i like zoom too but the problem with zoom though ada is that you can't do layover graphics on top of it and that's what i'm trying to do with the graphics and the and the commercials here at the same time zoom is a great a great option to have people intertwining people but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have the same capabilities of this with getting. Look at that freaking fly! Up, oh, I'm calling Ken back right now. Uh, it doesn't still have the the same capabilities of the graphics that I want uh, to bring people on and and to have graphics in here. So, hopefully, we have Ken. I can hear. I can see you. I can't hear you. You can hear me though. I don't have a clue what you're saying. It's got to be some setting. Do you have like your internal microphone? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. What did you just hit? It said microphone. Not, I'm working on Ken. It has a, a like a, a microphone with a cross through it. There was a problem to your speakers. Please connect. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to unplug something, Ken. Maybe it's on over here. Let me just go speakers, and I'm going to make it, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know what, LED. Now try, 
I have no idea. Can you hear me now? Camera. Hey, you Steve, there? can you hear me? I'm here. Can you hear me? Speakers. What a piece. Now I'm pissed off at this damn application. Let me turn off Bluetooth. And let's see what speakers. I don't have any sound right now. Hold on, Ken. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Headphones. Hey, there you are. Hold on. Ken? Yes? Yes, Steve. Oh, my gosh. Can you, you can hear me? Oh, my gosh. How are you, dude? I'm good, man. I'm sorry about this problem. Sorry. I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, I hate this computer. You're doing all right? How was... It was probably my fault. It was with these Bluetooth things. Uh, you know, I was just on a Zoom call for work. Yes. How did uh, that go? And, and life is... And, uh, and I, I haven't had any problems lately, so when suddenly I have a problem talking to my friend Steve, I was... Uh, and literally impressive. the most important person in your life, other than your wife. There's no doubt. And that's, that's a close... You know, that's tight. <laughs> Fishing partners, wives... I mean, that's how it works. <laughs> I, I can tell you Yukari wonders about that. I know. I was, uh, was going to say, go get her for me, would you please? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, man? How has this whole Corona thing made life crazy for you? You know, it, it, well, you just hit it in a nutshell, of course. You know, just, uh, just two months ago, uh, I was at the Bassmaster Classic, shaking hands, hugging people, yeah. talking to people, <laughs> elbow to elbow. Uh, life was normal. And, and now it looks like life will never return to that. Yeah. How crazy is that? I mean... Uh, the classic was, I mean, what I, we haven't talked since the, well, we've talked, but you know what I mean? We haven't yeah, face really to talked face. about the event or anything. We've talked about other crazy stuff. We haven't had a chance to go fishing in a while. We're going to do that gotta, soon though. Especially since, uh, my buddy Kurt Arakawa at <sighs> Daiwa came through for me today. The new Daiwa, uh, pitching flipping reel, the, uh, Tatula Elite P Look slash at you. XLS. Excited! I'm excited. If if, uh, if Steve is wondering how I'm going to kick his butt next time we go out, <laughs> here's the weapon right here. Here's the weapon. <laughs> now, now, you know, we have this whole thing. Then iCast gets canceled. I mean, how much does this influence your life uh, with Fishing Tackle Retailer, with the great magazine you put together every month? Well, thank you for that. It, it affects it completely. Everything is different now, Steve. And you know that. I mean. At first, I thought, well, no iCast. That's going to that's gonna make things a little bit easier. But no, it's, it's actually quite the opposite because now at FTR, because we serve all the, the tens of thousands of, of fishing tackle retailers in America, we've got to find a way to, to step up and fill that gap yeah. of, of no iCast. So as a matter of fact, uh, when you first tried me on Skype just a few minutes ago, I was in the middle of a, a meeting, a Skype meeting, with uh, the folks from my office, and we're we're mapping things out and trying to create a schedule. We have a game plan. We're we're refining it constantly every few days. We're refining the schedule, but basically, we're trying to come up with a bigger, better plan to serve all the retailers out there and to make sure that they're aware of the new products that are coming out on the market. Do you think that with uh, the this iCast that some companies are going to hold back and just releasing? things next year or do you think that they were that they're going to still put out stuff like they normally do because usually what there's two three hundred new products every year maybe at icast well just in the new product showcase there are always about a thousand oh okay i didn't even realize That's just in the showcase so yeah. i would guess that on the floor there are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five thousand new products every year um you know, no, I, I think these companies still have to int introduce new products. Uh, I think they still have to, you know, churn. They still yeah. have to churn because the there's a saying in the tackle industry uh, that I believe is quite true, and that is you can't sell what they've already got. Yeah. So you're constantly in the process of coming up with something new, more exciting, the next generation. Besides, a lot of the products that they were already planning to introduce in 2021 – they're already in the works. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be ready uh, next year anyway. 
And, and it's a lot easier to get behind a handful of products this year and another handful of products next year and just to keep that whole process going. So it's a big challenge. It's a big hassle and, and a problem. And uh, ASA is responding by what they're calling with, with what they're calling a virtual show. Yes, we'll be interested to see what that looks like. Uh, <laughs> well, let me just find some text. Hold on. <laughs> uh, I want to see a virtual statement. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone does that. You, yeah, it'll have a bigger a head. Virtual, you know, <laughs> yeah, for, for those who are those who are watching and listening. The, the real Steve Chapman, when he and I go fishing together, you know, we'll get started about daybreak. About 15 minutes later, Steve's ready to go. So I, I got to go. Steve, yes. <laughs> What's the time? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? It's 8.15? I got to get off the water. <laughs> uh, so if I had a virtual Steve, I could fish with Steve all day yeah. long. Usually about 11 o'clock is about my 11, 12 o'clock is really past my bedtime in the morning. So I got to – and and really, we try. I, we go so far away. It seems like we don't ever, we don't ever go any place close. Well, that's because you live in the only part of Florida that would, could be adequately described as a desert. <laughs> you have to, you have to go a long way to get to viable fishing water, Steve Chapman. I don't know how many times I have to explain this to you. I know, but, but next time we get together, I'm thinking alligator chain. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. It's um, about equidistant for us, I think. So. So knowing, I mean, have you have you seen any of the new products? Is there anything that you've a little rumor that's been in the, your ear that you're like, I really want to see this? I mean, I have one. I I can't say it over this, but I would text it to you. There's one lure I'm really, really in, well, two really, really interested in seeing. Uh, the new Strike King, that hybrid hunter. Have you seen that one yet? I was. Uh... I went fishing with Todd Castledine a few months he's ago. He's on the show after you. He's he's the guy who who is the creator of that bait, and he's the guy who named that bait. And uh, he and I were at, at Gros Savon, which is a fabulous fishing and hunting resort in Louisiana. And uh, I'm in the boat half a day with Todd, and he's showing me the hybrid hunter. And uh, he's up front throwing the hybrid hunter. I think I'm in the back throwing a thunder cricket because Todd wouldn't let me have a, a hybrid hunter. Uh <laughs> So, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the hybrid hunter, but I've been lucky enough to have seen the hybrid hunter and to have been in the boat with the guy who created that particular bait. Yeah. Yeah. I've been looking forward to it. I thought I, I reached out to our, to the, the friend you introduced me to Mark and, and to ask to see if I get some, some just pictures of it and some stuff like that. But I think they just finalized in talking to Todd last night, they just finalized 12 or 14 colors of it uh, just in the last week. So <clears throat> probably not. They don't probably have pictures ready for it. Yeah. Well, they'll they'll have them for you pretty soon. And uh, and well, I know that that a lot of the companies out there are having uh, distribution issues. Yeah. Not because at this point, at this point, it's not because they don't have the product. Although in the case of the hybrid hunter, they're not. They haven't geared up production yet. But their issue now is, of course, they're operating with skeleton crews, and a lot of their distribution centers are are working at half or less capacity. So, but I'll bet you Steve Chapman probably has some of these things before too long. Yeah, I'm hoping so. He's a, he's a big deal. If I could ever yeah. get on his show, I know yeah, I've made it. Yeah. Uh, we had a question from Mark. It says, uh, what's your favorite old school go-to lure bait when all else fails? I know this answer, but go ahead. Wow. Wow. I think I know this answer. I got, a, I got. I guess I got a lot of them. Uh, I'll tell you one I really like is I'm a big fan of the old Johnson Silver Minnow. Yep. Uh, the old uh, Aquatic Spoon. Um, but mm, what, what were you? What were you thinking? I'd I, say. I I thought for sure you'd say that Green Cinco. You seem to skip under every dock that we find and catch fish underneath, and I don't get the opportunity to catch. <laughs> I love the Senko. It's hard to go wrong with the Senko. Uh, another one of my all-time favorites is the Zoom Trick Worm. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. That's a great bait. Uh, the Magnum Trick Worm is a fabulous bait. I've just discovered a, a wonderful new hook from Owner that they call their Twist Lock Lightly Weighted um, Hook. And you put that in lieu of a Texas rig. Yeah. You know, a Texas rig puts that sinker in the nose of the bait. And wonk, it goes straight down to the bottom nose first. And in Florida, it disappears into the muck yeah. sometimes. But these uh, weighted swim bait style hooks, that worm kind of glides down. 
And if you haven't seen a uh, Magnum Zoom trick worm behind a weighted swim bait hook, you got a treat ahead of you. That, that thing has a shimmy and a shake like like nothing else. Like a fat girl in a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. Yeah. He isn't behind us, is he? <laughs> um, you've covered bass fishing for how many years? Uh, a year and a half now. Yeah. Uh, how many? I got your book right over there. Long time. A long time. When you look at all of I the... The bass fishing professionally, professionally, since I was 19 years old. Really? I didn't know that. Um, yeah. When you look at all the people that have been, that have come through here, is there is there any, like, any major pro that you just go, I like everything? I mean, there's a lot that we don't like that we talk about that we can't talk about now. But is there some that you just go, you want to, I like the way he fishes, I like the way he handles himself. Is there anybody like that that you really that you really enjoy talk and you enjoy talking to still? Yeah, uh, I, I actually, there's a lot of those guys, a lot of those guys, and and I would, I'm going to screw up if I start naming people, but uh, some of my favorite people in this industry are, and I'm, I'm going to miss some people here, so I'm going to apologize in advance, but but guys like Rick Klun mm-hmm. and Denny Brower, Edwin Evers. Aaron Martins, yeah. Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iconelli, um, Pete Glusick, uh, Pete. Shaw Grigsby. Oh, God, yes. Uh, I'm gonna, Bernie Schultz. I mean, I'm going to stop because, not because I've run out of names, but because uh, this is going to get embarrassing. I just I just missed a call from Todd Faircloth. Oh, yeah. Who, because I got to talk to Steve Chapman. I'm sorry, Todd Faircloth. I, I mean, really. Todd won't even come on. Hey. Could you ask him to come on the show? I will ask him to come on the show. I mean, how long have I known Todd? In all honesty, he's never been on the show either. Well, there was the incident with the milkshake and the axe, if you recall. And, <laughs> and he's never felt about you yeah. very, very highly. I actually have one of his uh, his castaway rods on on a bait caster, that lovely bait caster that you love me throwing in your ear and zinging every five <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Steve's throwing that one of those new Shimano DCs, and. Uh, I'm hearing the strange noise out of the back of the boat. And usually I don't hear anything from the back of the boat, especially fish splashing. Yeah, nothing. Like and so <laughs> I hear that and Steve explains, oh, it's it's the new, you know, Shimano Metanium DC. I'm thinking, well, rats, I don't have one of those. <laughs> now I do. Now you do. And the new Daiwa Tatula Elite P slash F 103 XS. So is that the and fast, is that the fast real retrieve one in? Is that got the higher retrieve? No, this is eight to one, but it's okay. designed for pitching and flipping, and and I just got it in through FedEx today. And again, Kurt Arakawa, wonderful friend, super professional in this industry. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, that's. Uh, but this is a this is going on a flipping stick really soon. Don't like, as soon as you hang up. Don't let Boudreau touch the flipping stick. Oh my God, Boudreau is not allowed to touch <laughs> anything. I own <laughs> nothing at all. That's one of the best stories of the whole world when. We're on Lake X, who, by the way, has I am the plague to them. Um, and then you get this that brand new Fitzgerald flipping stick from from Trevor. I you I don't even think was Trevor on the water with us that day. He might have been. I can't recall. I think he but... might have been on the 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 Starbright boat. You might be right. And he gives you this brand new stick. You want to show who I think it was just just come off maybe Angler of the Year, Brandon Cardit. He's on the boat with us. And you're like, Brandon, you've got to check out this thing. And of course. And and I hand it to Brandon. I reach across. He's in a different boat. Yes. I reach across. I hand Brandon the rod. And then Boudreaux starts saying, oh, let me see it. Let me see it. I said, Brandon Card, do not allow him to see that rod. You did. And, uh, uh, you know. Brandon's uh, no longer your friend. I'm grateful. This, I'm I'm. <laughs> Very happy I can say that Brandon Card has not caught a fish since that day. <laughs> His career is basically over. <clears throat> he's holding on, but I don't know how. He's just yeah, really. He's on. He's on that brink. <laughs> Brandon Card, you're dead to me. <laughs> That's why I said that that friendship died that day. Just, just like that flipping stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it looks well, like you've lost some weight, yeah. by the way. Uh, well, you know, uh, Yukari's got me on a tough diet. Oh, wait a minute. Stand up. I want to see what away. shorts you have on. <laughs> well, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Stand I've up. got on. Actually, stand up. My shirt. Okay. Yep. Uh, from Bill Lewis Echo, from my friends over at uh, Bill Lewis. Uh, Bill Lewis, yeah. Uh, Wes Higgins was kind enough to send me this shirt. Wes is one of the best guys in the world. Uh, and he makes, uh, well, talk about an iconic old school bait. How about the rattle trap? Yeah. Uh, the rattle trap is the most ubiquitous lure in the bass world. More people have a rattle trap than anything else. Really? I didn't know that. Yes, sir. So, Abs- absolutely. That's that's awesome. Okay. Well, I have you to. You know who doesn't have a rattle trap? No, I think I have a box of them. Exactly. Exactly my point. And, and, and you want to. I've. I don't even remember. They had somebody else other than Wes there. I don't forgot his name. I think he uh, retired a couple of years ago or last year. Oh, you're talking about Richard. Yes. And Richard used yeah. to send me a box Richard all the time. Broadwell. Yeah. Broadwell, great guy. He spends a significant amount of time down in Florida now uh, during the winter. But, uh, yeah, Richard Broadwell, great fella. Um, just uh, one of the real industry pros out there. But he did retire a couple of years ago. Sorry to see Richard go. I always look forward to seeing Richard at uh, the different trade shows out there. Yeah. But Wes is, Wes is fantastic. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people know Wes Higgins is president of Bill Lewis Lures. What they don't know is that Bill Lewis, the man who invented the rattle trap, was Wes's grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, we've had Wes on. Wes was a great interview. We talked about his, his grandpa and uh, how rattle trap started. That's one of those companies that you just – you really can't go wrong with it. I, and really – there's so many different ways to fish a rattle trap. That's one yeah. of the other things people don't realize. You know, most people just think you just cast it and rip it through the grass. There's a lot of really, really different ways to fish that lure, and and it it catches fish everywhere. It does catch fish everywhere, and it's it's one of those lures that in Florida you almost need to have one tied on tw- twelve months out of the year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate you you coming on the show. I think we're going fishing, what, next week, maybe? Uh, yeah, I got to get the steering worked on on my boat. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, let's let's try to get out there next week. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Everyone, go Everybody check Everybody stay off the alligator chain. Yes. Stay off. The alligator chain is now off limits. Yeah. Well, we can we, – everybody stay off of it. Everybody. I mean, Including you jet skiers. Especially you jet skiers. If you want to hear me swear, drive a jet ski by the boat when we're fishing. When I lived uh, when I lived around Lake Lanier in Georgia, we called them Lake Lice. Yeah, they're that horrible they're things. So anyway, thank you, Ken Duke. Everyone, go to Fishing Tackle Retailer. Check out that they they'll have an online version of their iCast special up in the next couple months. It's always the best of everything. You see this damn fly? It's the best of it's the best place to find out all the new products. Thank you, Steve Chapman. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. You know I love you. Send love to the life for me. I'll do it. It, That that door back there, I'm guessing, is a a dark and dank closet, and Boudreaux is tied up in there. Is that correct? (laughs) Boudreaux isn't even allowed on this thing. No live from the casa of Boudreaux. I mean, I don't want I don't want that funk breaking into here. Actually, you want to know it? You can see Boudreaux. He's that little fly that keeps running around here and bugging the (laughs) shit out of me. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Where's the FCC? We don't have to worry about that anymore. We don't have to worry about that. That's the best part of these live from the Casa shows. I can say what I want and not worry about getting dumped. That, that's one of the great joys of being in studio with you guys, though, is every once in a while, Steve would let one <laughs> slip. And then he's got to rely on Chris in the booth. And then, or me uh, hitting that button on the side as fast as possible. Okay. Then, then the show has to drag for a few seconds while the seven-second delay bills back up. Yeah, that is true. Okay, send love to the wife. Tell her I said hello, please. I'll do it. And we'll talk to you soon. Be healthy. Thank you, man. Later. I'm going to try to – there we go. That was Ken Duke, the Ken Cyclopedia of Bass. Just one of the greatest guys in the whole world, honestly. My hair is all over the place, and this fly is freaking killing me. Okay, our next person, because Mike is busy, I'm going to put on this interview with uh, Todd Castledean. If you don't know Todd, Todd has a great uh, YouTube channel, and I recorded this last night, and really, this is one of, this goes on for a little bit of time, but quite honestly, 
it might be one of the better interviews I've ever had. This guy is so raw and so honest and so so good. You need to follow him and be part of it. So I'm going to run a quick commercial for Optima Battery, and then when we get back, we will have we will have uh, Todd Constant Castledine. It's one thing to call yourself the ultimate power source. It's another thing to prove it. The all new Optima Yellow Top with Pure Flow technology with up to three times the battery life. Unsurpassed performance built to fit today's vehicles. Optima, the ultimate power source. Our next guest is a FLW Pro YouTube creator. Also has a great Facebook page. I should mention that too. Been a professional guide. Five tournament wins. Been to the Force Cup champion or been, been to two force cup appearances his sponsors include striking power pole mercury ranger costa th marine hummingbird lose falcon rods tackle addict and toyota tundra we i couldn't be happier to have my new friend who had a great day fishing which is going to kill me later on today while i'm editing film editing videos todd castle dean hello how are you sir Oh, pretty good. How are you doing? I am doing great. Nice to finally meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, on the phone quite a bit, so yeah, it's it's good to see a face with a, a voice. Yes, yes. Well, I, I do appreciate it. Um, people that don't know, you've been doing YouTube, your YouTube channel, but also you've been a pro fisherman for how, how long have you been in this industry? Um, so I, I, I've been fishing tournaments and and I kind of went about it probably different than everyone else in the country. So I've been fishing tournaments since I was probably 15 or 16. Um, pretty much been doing it through college. I didn't do the college fishing thing um, yeah. down here in Texas. It was kind of getting going. But to be honest with you, when I was doing it, we were just we were fishing. <laughs> we were fishing against the big boys right off the bat, you know, fishing big events, team events on Rayburn with 300 teams. Mm -hmm. um that's how you did it so when you were in college or 18 or 19 there was no competing against guys your own age you just had to you wouldn't competed if, if you wanted to fish tournament against guys that were guys like me so i mean uh that's that's kind of how i've been doing it i've been doing it full time um uh, from about college on so i'd say almost uh 16 17 years how did you but just uh but that was my main profession. I mean, yeah. I really never had a, a um, I had some little jobs through college and stuff, but I just literally fished for a living, fishing tournaments for the last 15 years. How did you get introduced into the outdoors? Did your dad take you fishing when you were young? How did it get started? How did you get this? How did you get addicted? Yeah. Um, so I grew up on Lake Livingston, or, or my dad had a lake house on Lake Livingston. And so we, we kind of went up there on weekends and stuff and catfishing. I mean, I, I never really realized it, but man, I was just always by the water, either going white bass fishing all summer or cat fishing. And then it was raining one day and a guy had come in and put his boat in the marina. And, uh, he said, he said, man, you ever bass fish? I said, no. He said, man, they're eating right over there. And he rigged me up a worm and a, you know, just a Texas rig worm. And I went over there and caught two and I was in the seventh grade. And from then on, all, I did was did the other bat you know white bass and catfishing but it was almost 90 percent black bass fishing after that and my dad you know i lived close to the marina where i could walk the marina so i didn't have a boat yeah um we had a pontoon boat but i i was able to walk somewhere and fish for for years i did that that's that that's the the great thing do you ever is your do you still get to fish with your dad i mean i, I mean no he, he passed away sorry, in uh 2006 oh it's fine and um but i still uh we uh we fished we started fishing tournaments together um a couple years later and and fished a lot we fished a lot we had a lot a lot of arguments on the water but we had a uh, but when you spend that much time me and him spent more time together than anyone else uh for a long time fishing so uh they were all good memories yeah that that's awesome do you have you have kids of your own though i think i saw a a, a son and a daughter yes i have a, a 5 year old boy and an 8 year old daughter oh I, now the son is he got the is he got the juice? I mean, does he like it? They both. She probably has done it more. Okay. Um. She's she's um. You know how they are. You get two kids, or they're, they're going to be a little different in how they approach things. 
she uh, she started doing it. They've both done it, and I and I take them very. I watch how I take them. I don't take them too often. Um, I try to only take them when it's really really good mm-hmm. and not for a long amount of time. But lately, um, they've been going a little bit longer, and they went out there and caught some crappie the other day, so they enjoyed that. But she's caught some sight fish on her own. Um, he caught a six pounder the other day, crappie fishing. Nice. Caught it on his own. So, um, yeah, they 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 enjoy it. I don't know if it's more just enjoying it out there with me, mm-hmm. uh, but they do they do they're pretty good at it. They like it, and I kind of I have to remind myself I didn't really start doing this till I was in the seventh grade. So yeah. they've got a long time. I don't want to burn them out. Yeah, it, it's really good. I have a I have a ten year old just turned ten. He's been fishing with me and going places. You said the exact perfect words. You take them when it's hot because if not, they are training the bait and the and training the shrimp or doing whatever. They're doing something to annoy the living s out of you. But that's just you know that's just how it is. But it's still great right. to hear that you get them outdoors. Now you've how long have you been doing the YouTube channel? And everyone, if you don't know, it's Todd Castledine Fishing, the YouTube channel. Uh, I watch have watched every video to be honest. But how long have you been doing? Really? Yeah, I've watched way too so, way too many. So I, I was anti camera in the boat, didn't understand it, didn't get it. In FLW two years ago, it was the first year they made us get a camera. Yeah. So I just had to put one on. I've always been intrigued by like wanting some of the stuff I do on film because to be honest with you, the things I do, I think all I ever heard was um, from co-anglers and from pe- anyone that fished with me is like, I mean, you do things so much different than everyone else. Um, and, and I knew that. I knew I did. So I, I re- you know, I put it on and I, I just, I, I didn't think much about it. I finally was like, hey, if I'm going to use it, you know, have to put this on and I save the footage, I started getting some pretty cool footage and I started a YouTube channel. I knew nothing about it. I just it was a place for me to put the the footage mm-hmm. and I found, you know, learning how to use the camera and it took me forever to learn how to edit and all these things. And I got better and a little bit better and it really didn't take off. And it wasn't until, um, I mean, I had the, no subscribers or, you know, a hundred or 200 for months. Yeah. And I, the YouTube thing is so much different than just, just real fishing mm-hmm. and tournament fishing. So, me and Andrew Upshaw and Bradley Hallman, when we um, stopped fishing the FLW tour and started fishing the Bassmaster Opens to try to qualify for the elites, it seemed like we were going to have to take things into our own hands. Yeah. And so we started getting better right around January is when all of a sudden it went from seven to eight months of just kind of a nothing on YouTube. And then all of a sudden it has skyrocketed. And we have figured out how to do it, um, and it's been it's been fun. Like I said, me and Andrew are out there today. He drove in from Oklahoma, and we spent all day long out there filming stuff and had a blast doing it. So um, we're doing a we're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of content, a lot of different things. So, so you you mentioned it just now. You were with FLW, the whole FLW craziness, Major League Fishing. I mean, that just has got blown up beyond belief. But you didn't want to go. You didn't want to stay with FLW and try to make the the Bass Pro Tour. You wanted to you, – you thought that the elites were the way to go? And why? Yeah. Okay. There's well, this could be – I know, I know that. I can, I can shorten it up. Um, at the time of MLF and, and when they started it, uh, we can do two things. One, I was – uh, you I was at the top of the level with FLW yeah. and I say top of the level, there was nothing higher. Yeah. And all of a sudden now there was something higher. So now I had to go requalify for something, which I'm, I've re I've qualified for the tour every year through the coasts. I've qualified for the elites before. Um, so I have no problem trying to qualify mm-hmm. MLF at the time. There was no qualification. It's invite. So all those guys are invited Half the guys at the elites were invited, and I'm still stuck over here trying to qualify. So if I got to go qualify, I looked at what I wanted to qualify for. Mm-hmm. MLF was pretty hell bent on it's a numbers game, it's a one pound fish, and things like that. And 
I could only go by what they were t- saying. And that at the time they were saying they weren't going to change the, anything, you know, now to a two pound deal, anything. Mm-hmm. And, and if they'd have just said, Hey, we're going to look into it. I might rethink it. But at the time I can only go off what they were saying. So they didn't want to change anything. They were going to do it this way. And, and by golly, we're going to stick by it. Well, I'm a guy who grew up fishing, uh, down here in Texas, really, really big fish. I'm still horrible at catching numbers. I know I told you today I caught some, Yeah. but, um, but it was still fishing for big fish. I mean, I just so happened sometimes that catches numbers. Um, my strengths are sight fishing, frog fishing, um, throwing big baits. I, I've always done that because I didn't worry about limits. I worried about trying to catch five. And the reason was, is we fished, I fished all those team events. And even in Texas, you can't just go out that you have to catch a giant bag to win. And I learned over the years that coming in fifth place is great, but it, you all you got to do is come in one or two first place a year and you're going to win 20 30 40 grand yeah and that's the only way to make it and so you know i just trained myself over years to do that so with that being said the mlf wasn't it didn't fit my strengths Mm -hmm. at all yeah and then there was a two-year process of of qualifying in were they going to let me qualify in because uh, to be honest, I just didn't know what they were going to do. It was a, it was there on year one, they were changing things rapidly. I, I got to be honest with you, and I haven't told many people this. This whole year has been a wash, right? For a lot of things, like yeah. I don't, they're not going to get all the MLF tournaments. I don't think FLW will get them all in. Are they going to still make it two years? Yeah. And so, I mean, and so are, are you? Are you now looking at now two more years after this year? I don't know. No one knows. But the elites are the elites, and the opens are still the same. Still five fish. Um, we're going to get all of our opens in. From what I see, they haven't uh, canceled any of them. They've just rescheduled them. So it kind of it's worked out really well. But that's kind of my my deal. Is I've I, I just that format fits me so much better, and. I honestly, and I'll be honest, I did not like FLW. I've been there two years, and they had raised the entry fee both years, mm-hmm. and the payout did not get any better, regardless of whose fault that was. Um, I always said, hey, I'm not going down as the guy who paid the most entry fees ever to fish a tournament. I, I didn't – that didn't appeal to me. Yeah. Yeah, the, so. pay, the pay to play and how FLW completely – you know, even this year when – the beginning of the i mean we to be honest last year was i mean last year was madness in the industry i mean really we didn't know all the people moving when flw was purchased by major league fishing it kind of felt like and i mean no disrespect to any of the fl flw anglers that are out there that there was that what you said there was a second tier it was almost like they were a third string they were they were the backups and 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 with major league fishing you, like you mentioned, you don't, we didn't know any of these changes they were going to make. And, you know, it, it's it's a, it's a weird thing. I mean, it brings me into my next question, to be honest. Now that we've had this uh, Corona of 19, how has it changed? I mean, are you still going? I mean, you went fishing today, but how has it changed your life and your family's life? Like, like, so I was, I was a little nervous um, going into it. So. We, we, um, so it's different this year. So down here in Texas, when I fish the tour, they don't let me fish any, any team events. So, and I'm a guy who, like I said, I make almost all my money just off tournament earnings or tournament wins or or tournament, you know, from tournament stuff. So, um, if I fish the tour, the only other tournaments I can fish are basically coasts and opens. Mm Mm-hmm. And we have big tournaments down here. So when I got off the tour, I was able to fish now team events again. And me and my, my partner, Russell Cecil, who also stopped fishing the tour, we jumped right back into the team stuff. Oh. Um, and so we were fishing that. Um, I actually went down to LBJ with Phil Marks, uh, Phil Marks from Strike King. You know, I'm sure you know who. And we, uh, we came in second at LBJ right before. It was, that's the last tournament I fished. 
Um, I've never even been there. We just went down there and came in second of Bass Champ. So I was making money in our team stuff and, and some BFLs again. And and I did good in my first open. So everything was going good. And I make my money during sight fishing. <laughs> and it literally shut us down right when the sight fishing started happening. So I was a little nervous. But I had started this YouTube channel and it was still going really good. So I felt like I was still um, a part of something and still doing something, re- even though the tournaments had shut down. So as that kind of went in, everything, to be honest with you, has been really, really good. Um, the sponsors I have had, they've been able to stay afloat and keep going. None of them have had any setbacks. A couple, but not, like nothing major. So nothing really changed in that aspect of it. I'm still pushing out content on YouTube and doing that. So a lot of them are still happy with that. I got to be honest with you. I've spent more time with my kids over the past three months than I've ever been able to. Um, And I fished more than I've ever have in probably the last 10 years. Isn't that awesome? Yes. And let me tell you why the team stuff. We have so many off limits where we are not allowed to fish. Yeah. And, Okay, so, and then when I when I travel, so much goes into traveling. Like you're you're just gone from home, you fish for a lot of days, you're shaking off fish, you're not really catching anything. When you come home, you don't want to go to the lake and just fun fish. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm just fun fishing like three or four days a week with my kids. Like I said, with Andrew, me and him, and Holman did a tournament with my buddy Jason, but. I mean, it's on and on and on. We're doing all these things. I'm fishing. Listen, I'm fishing online tournaments right now. A guy called me up and I'm fishing online tournaments. Never done it. I'm not even, I'm entered in the tournament, but I'm actually not like paying for it. I'm not really receiving any money either. I'm just trying to put up a score. Yeah. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And to be honest with that, I've had a blast. Like I have, I'm fishing a lot. And this is the, this is the time when I learn the most is when you're just able to go out there and not worry about the pressure of like trying to find fish for a tournament. You're just, we just, me and Andrew just went out there and like learned some more stuff today. That's awesome. Okay. Now I've been, I've been all over Mark, our boy from strike King about trying to get this, this new lure that I, I don't, you have had a major influence on this. I think this is pretty much a lot of you in, in this lure. I think they were going to release it this year at iCast. And now that iCast is gone, it's the new, strike king hybrid hunter only video i've seen of it is you fishing i've watched it one of them i've watched three times to be honest just to, to just keeping it real because i want to be honest with you you have got to tell me how the whole process of creating this unbelievable bait happened and how come mark copley can't send me any yet <laughs> okay so this is a long story but uh, there's more videos of it. Oh, there okay. is. Oh, yes. Okay, good. It, if there's one, if you want to look on there, how to fish grass. I did a how to fish grass video. Yes. I, yes. I don't show the bait. That's the bait you were using then. Yes. Nice. And the reason is still. So there's there's that video, and then there's a video of. It's probably my number one video. But, it says band across there. Yes. Me and my buddy Jason fished a tournament and we won it. <laughs> and and I'm now not allowed to fish those tournaments anymore. They made some they made some pretty interesting rules that pretty much affect six people in the country, and I'm the only one that it affects <laughs> that fishes this tournament. So it's not a big deal. I wasn't upset about it. But in later in that video, half of it's us crank crank deep crank, and the other one is throwing that throwing that bait. Yes. But I'm not. I was not going to show that bait on camera until I was allowed to. Yeah. But that is us catching them on that bait for the second half of that video of us just crushing on them. So there's, I've got some stuff in Florida of me catching them on it, but nice. I don't show the bait as well. There's there's videos out there, but it doesn't show the actual bait. Me and Andrew did a video today on it because we probably caught fifteen or twenty on it. Nice. Now, so now how did how did the whole process of did you know that you wanted this bait? Was there something that you yeah. saw in the industry that was missing that said I need to do this? Well, so here's the deal. This is not a bait I invented or okay. made up. Okay. With. Neither did Strike King. 
Um, I was with a company called Strike Pro. Um, I, I I don't know the date to 2007 or eight. Okay. Um, it's a company out of Taiwan. Um, and they had a they had a a place here in the U.S. It was actually down in Galveston Bay. Uh, and so, which is in Texas on the coast, whatever. And they were kind of a, they're, they're, they had an affiliate of the U S side over here. Um, I got in with them on the bass fishing side and, and long story short, they strike pro makes baits for like all kinds of fishing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if if I I don't even know what these fish are, they catch them in Sweden and all over the place. They have teeth. They're just, it's just nuts right well they have these baits and the and the guys who who make them uh kind of the president over there he just they just make 20 30 baits a year i swear well there i got these boxes when i was with strike pro of just of just lures and i would get them like just big giant monster boxes and there'd be 100 different baits in there Mm -hmm. and some of them most of them weren't that great or didn't really i couldn't really figure out what to use them for and I had this one bait, one, and it was this, it was just this one, this one bait, and this one color, and the color I did not like. Mm. And I was like, well, you know what? It was one of those deals. Like, I don't know what to do with this bait, and this weird, stupid color. <laughs> if it was an industrial color, I might go throw it. And you got to realize, I mean, hundreds of them. So I was always tinkering around, like throwing them. And I made a cast with it one time. I'm like, that looks pretty cool. I don't know what to do with it. So I put it back up and never, never threw it again. Well. My buddy Billy Howe, um, who was with him at the time, a saltwater guide who's phenomenal, and we and another guy, I think it was Andrew, we all went to Rayburn one day. And I was like, I brought like 10 or 15 baits, and we we're just going to throw these baits. Well, that was the first one I had tied on. And we went out there, and within the first five minutes, we knew. And I started catching them so good. And I had two other guys in there throwing rattle traps and everything else. And I was, it wasn't even a competition. I was killing them. Hmm. Well, we got on the phone and said, hey, we need, there's only one in the U.S. I said, we need to get more of these. They didn't want to make them. This bait was made 20 years ago. Yeah, because no one had said that it was any good. Yeah. So they didn't make any more. So we got in a big, not an argument, but we were like, we forced them to make some more. Um, and from then, like I said, Strike Pro Overseas is an awesome company. The one and I, you know, Strike Pro that was in America is is gone. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't exist. It does. It, it, yeah. it failed. Um, but we got to see a lot of those baits. So we were always going to do something with this bait, and I really had no reason to bring it out anymore. My stockpile was getting pretty low. To be honest <laughs> with you, and, uh, there's the truth. That's the truth no, right there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, we always had enough. I know. I, like, I know this feeling. I know this feeling. Yeah, Keep going. Sorry. I mean, you start you know, stressing out, so, man. You do. You do. And man, you give one your way or one their way. And well, anyways, me and Phil, I go out there and man, if you know Phil Marks, man, Phil Marks is like, he's from a different world, man. He's awesome. But I told him about this bait. He didn't care. Mm-hmm. And I told him about it for another year. He didn't care. I went out there one time and, and, and fish didn't cost him fish. He didn't care. And finally, I got him on Toledo Bend one day. And it, sh- like it, it showed out. It showed out like, like I've always seen it show out. And he looked at me and he goes, all right. All right. And, it, and it got real serious real quick. I mean, it was one of those days. Yeah. Like, it, it was it was he was like this is all of a sudden it started clicking for him yeah and i said hey man this is what it's all about so we we kind of tinkered back and forth about how do we want to approach it like how do we we don't want to copy it yeah we don't want to do any of that stuff and he said do you know those guys at strike pro i said yeah absolutely so i i, I called up my buddy leif on the from the sweden market and i, I told him about what we were trying to do and Next thing I know, Strike King licensed it out from Strike Pro. I orchestrated the whole deal. Strike Pro's loving it. Strike King's loving it. I like it all worked out really well. And it's it was really cool for me because I didn't know that could happen. But for two companies to come together and 
and everyone's benefiting, right? I mean, they got extra stuff. We're getting what we wanted. We don't have to copy it. We don't have to get in all that stuff about, you know, uh, you know, I don't like that part of the business. The intellectual property, you. all the crap that comes with this right. industry. It, and then someone else comes out there and saying, oh, this is better. And I'm like, hey, hey look, I've been on this thing for 15 years. I know how good it is. I know when someone makes something that's not as good. I don't want to try to remake this and it not be as good. I want it to be, I know how good it is. You can't make this bait any better. Yeah. And it's the same bait. So we are we have the same bait. I think I was just the only, the first person in the U.S. to ever throw this bait. So like hands down. It's so like, what makes this bait so so amazing? I mean, from a th- talk about it from a Florida standpoint. Is it a shallow water a shallow water crankbait, or is it? Can you switch it up and make it deeper? What makes it, in your opinion, what makes it so good? Okay, so there's in in since I'm allowed to do this right now, I can talk about um, what it does. It only goes at the most five foot. Okay. Okay. But here's the thing: is it it has an, a weird L shaped bill on it. Yes. I think you've seen some some Rapala baits, maybe. I have seen some, some. big long you know long baits it's that they baits. had a, that bill. Yeah. And and that bill is unique. Now it doesn't really. It, it does some things, but it's not everything. The bait is big and it's buoyant and it's very round looking. Uh-huh. And when I say round, it doesn't have, it, it's very round on top and round on bottom. And when you look at it at first glance and you might have this bait for a year. And if I don't say anything, you'd probably never pay attention to it because it of how it just looks different. It's flat sided. Okay. And so it's like, but it looks so is it like a V? Right, wide. Okay. It's wide on top and it's wide on bottom, okay. but it, it's flat sided. But normally when you look at a bait like that, it does you wouldn't think of it being flat sided. It's the most buoyant crankbait you'll probably ever throw. And it's probably the loudest crankbait you'll ever throw. Oh. Okay. With this L shaped bill. So this is the best way to explain it. All crankbaits dive like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. They all have an angle. Right. So when you pull them, they go down like this and I can kind of see myself that I'm doing it right. Right. Yeah. So they, they go down. Yeah. And if you stop, kind of come back up. Yeah, they, but as soon as you click on them again, they go back down. This thing runs like this and that L bill doesn't make it dive like that. It just dives like this. Okay. So as it's going through the water, it just slowly goes like slowly goes down, but it stays on that horizontal plane. The, here's the key. Florida, you got acres and acres of grass, Mm -hmm. right? Any crankbait dives down into that grass. Mm -hmm. Well, so you're only allowed to fish it a very small, like a foot or two, and then you'd have to stop. Mm -hmm. Well, this thing, you can get it down there and it floats so good. You can get it out of the grass and then it takes it forever to reach down the grass again. So you're able to work it sometimes 10, 15, 20 foot before it hits grass again. Oh, that's great. But it's so buoyant. It's so buoyant that it floats up out of the grass without you doing anything. All rattle trap baits, right? Rattle trap, red eyes, everything else. Like that. But they still also what you're doing is you're ripping it out of the grass and letting it sink. You're doing the opposite here. You're staying down in the grass and letting it float up. Oh, yeah. So you'll see me rip sometimes. I'm not ripping it out of the grass. I'm ripping it to maybe get grass that's get free from it, but you'll see me shake it. And what's shaking it is, is it's, it's lit. When you start shaking it, it shakes and it comes out of that grass mm. backward. Yeah. So it's super loud. So I tell everyone, I'm like, if you think of it like a crankbait, if you think of this like as a 2.5 square build, like you're going to go run down the rocks of a causeway, you're going to miss the whole bait. Yeah. Um, it is a rattles, you know, vibrating bait. It is a jerk bait. It is a, it is a crank bait. And surprisingly, it's a swim bait. And I say the swim bait because all swim baits swim very. So I catch them a lot where people are catching them on swim baits. I'll throw this thing. Same thing with rattle baits. Same thing with jerk baits because 
since it's so buoyant and it's flat sided, when you jerk it, it goes nuts and goes crazy. It looks like a jerk bait underwater when you start popping it. And that's why I tell everyone is that like, it's all those things combined. The problem with, I think everyone's going to have with this bait is they're so used to throwing certain baits at certain things mm -hmm. and they're not going to think to throw this thing there because there, it's not going it, to, it's going to, it's not going to make sense for them. But like, I can throw that thing over a foot of grass nice and it work right you might have to work it slower but you keep your rod tip up but anything else like you'll see guys look at me all the time and they'll go man he's throwing he's throwing like a rattle trap up there and they'll go make one cast where i just made a cast it hits they make two cranks and rattle traps hung up in the grass mm -hmm. where i'm over there just working it nonstop, and so and they can't figure out what's going on because it they they just assume i'm throwing like a rattles rattles you know trap style bait yeah so yeah. it's it's really unique. It's really different. And there's nothing else like it. So it works on places. And I got to be honest, a lot of it times it works because people have never seen they, the fish never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I've seen the, your videos. <clears throat> I reached out to Mark uh, last week. I told, I told them you were going to be on here to, to give you credit. And I, pre we appreciate it. But I also was asking Mark, Hey, do you guys, have you taken any really good photos of this thing? And, and he was like, look, I'm working on it was exactly the text he sent me. And then I'm like, okay, I need to, I know I need to not ask after that, but hopefully, hopefully I think, well, I was going to be at the media conference. I don't know if you were part of the, going to be part of the media event at, after the Lake Hart, Hartwell FLW, uh, like in the end of a, uh, the end of April or would have been, it would have been last week. I don't know if you were going to be part of that one. No, but they, they had, um, I think me and Phil had talked about that. Uh, I think they had said, Hey, I don't need to go. I, I know that, that we had just finalized colors. Me and Crispin had finalized colors. Um, a couple of weeks ago. How many colors are going to so, be, are going to be available? Something I should know. 12 <laughs> or 14. Okay. I don't want to get that. We've gone back and forth on that. I, it might just be 12. Okay. Um, I'll have to look on that. And, and so I, I like literally we had gotten them. They came overseas, like I think two weeks ago. And I still don't even have that. I was going to get a couple of them just to make sure. And I hadn't even gotten them. I, I kind of, I've still got the prototype colors. Yeah. So I've got like one here and one. I don't even have all the prototype colors. And maybe that's, why, Mar that's why maybe Mark can't, can't get it to me. Right. So they were trying to do pictures for catalogs, for ICAST, for all these things, because I think this is, I think this might have ruined a lot of iCast. Oh, um, yeah. Of like what baits might be released. Like this whole thing, you know, everything's up in the air right now. Yeah. I, 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 think that, I think they're still on board with this coming out. It might not be till October, but it's going to come out after iCast for, from what I understand. Yeah. I, I, I was talking to Mark about we're going to do some iCast specials just technically, you know, Get the get product. Have someone come on, talk about the new product, that kind of stuff. But it's still, it's kind of still in the works. You know, it's, right. it's one of those. You know, you, normally we do a, a show on Saturday in a, in at iHeartMedia, and this whole virus thing has just screwed up everything. Um, but you know, this is uh, this is why I'm doing these live from the Casa shows, and you know, just trying to keep some extra content out. I like like you. I I I know how much. I know how hard it is to do content for YouTube alone, and and I don't even fish a quarter as much as you do. So, uh, but you got to you got to just keep putting out that content because you're killing it. I love it. I mean, I really love it. I'd rather watch you than I, these I, dumbass Guggen Squad little brats. To be honest, I want to see real listen. fishermen. No, listen, I, I'm gonna I offend understand. somebody, but I, I, it's just how I am. I know. Well, here's the deal, me and. Me and uh, when me and Hallman, my, okay, so me and my buddy Jason, we drive up to you know fish that this tournament we made up against Hallman and Bradley Hallman and Andrew Upshaw in yeah. Texoma, and we were like, let's just go up there. We haven't been there in two years, and we we went out there and both caught like nineteen pounds, and it just showed up to a lake and crushed on them, right? And uh, they had a tournament two days later, sixteen pounds won it. Um, <laughs> I get some messages. It's like, man, we really thought 25 pounds was going to win that thing. And, and man, 
you know, those are local guys. And I was like, I, I don't know what to say, <laughs> you know, and there was, I'm not going to name who it was, but a, one of them, I think it was in Google and went up there the day before we were there and it was not good. Yeah. I, I, and I was going, I don't get, man, I'm, I don't get this YouTube stuff's hard on me sometimes because uh -huh. I don't get it because now I didn't want to release stuff because I didn't want secrets out there. Yeah. Well, now I'm at the point where like, I don't like what people are putting out there because I think it's, I think it's wrong. There's the problem. See, I've been doing our YouTube. Not everyone. Not everyone. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to make a mess for anybody, but um, right. I think what. See, we've been doing we've been doing this radio show for twelve years, and we've had an idea to do YouTube stuff for eight of the years. Well, it wasn't till last year, probably right around the classic, that we said, "I said I'm going to start filming something once or twice a week. Usually, it's a a lure review or something, or me fishing, or interviews like this that we put on the YouTube channel." And it, it's taken a year to even get to 4,100 subscribers, which I'm really happy about. But there's so many people. What I realize about YouTube is there's so many people that put out this crap and they use clickbait or they use a girl with her ass out or something like that. Or they do – the amount of clickbait is retarded. I mean, I know that's horrible. But that's the way un, – it's unfortunate that's the way – things work on youtube you have to put some sort of title to make people like your stuff but really right. that stuff generally isn't that stuff that you click on that's clickbait is has nothing to do with what you're going to see on that video and it's a shame that that's how it works but that some of those guys are really good about it not to mention they said that i try not to swear Truth be honest, there's a thing behind me. Maybe you can see. Maybe swearing will help. I, I I swear all the time, but there's a few words I don't say. The c word is one of them. There was a whole video about the c word on one of their channels the other day, and my son heard it at 10 years old, and I flipped out. I honestly, I flipped out. I'm like, why would they let this on? I know it's you know it is what it is, but why would they let this? Why would why would they not bleep that out for me? And it just, yeah. it made me really pissed off. It, I don't watch much YouTube stuff. I never did. Um, I, I watch more of it now just because I'm interested in it. All it does is a lot of times make me mad. Um, <laughs> and and I, I always tell everyone this is I, I contribute. Like, I'm like, hey, what I'm going to tell you is not in a magazine. I'm not knocking any magazines out there, even the best ones out there. What, what I'm saying is, and it's kind of like a fishing report. Guys are going to give a fishing report on Rayburn, and I'm going to look at that, and it's a great way to catch a fish. Mm -hmm. Guys are going to Rayburn to go win tournaments. Yeah. Not one fishing report I've ever seen on Rayburn will win you a tournament. Mm -hmm. There are other things out there. Um, you know, hey, go throw a – it's always go throw a Cinco or Worm on the edge of the grass. And, th and I'm like, no, man, like we don't do any of that stuff. We do this other stuff, and we want to show you all. And it's been – it's been good. 99% of the responses I've had has been good. I get 1% every once in a while. The hybrid hunter was a major one. They were like, I had all kinds of weird stuff about it. But so many guys were like, I didn't even see the bait. Or you didn't even talk about the bait. And I was like, look, look. he's going to go show you a bait and talk about it for 20 minutes on my YouTube channel. And that's what you, I'm not going to tell you this is the best bait in the world. And just talk about it. Yeah. That's not me. Yeah. I can do something different. I'm going to go show you 25 pounds on that bait and a whole bunch of fish catches. I shouldn't have to tell you how good it is. Yeah. I'm You're, showing the you The proof is, is in the pudding. Right. And I'm like, and if you don't like that, I'm going to make another video and I'm going to catch 30 pounds on it. And if you don't like that, I'm going to catch and do another video. Because my point is, is. I shouldn't have to ever tell you about a beta. You can watch me catch fish on public waters, not in some pri on public on Rayburn, on wherever I go, down in Florida. I'm using them in tournaments where money is on the line, mm -hmm. and I'm using this stuff. That if that doesn't show you how good of a bait I think it is, because in a tournament we're going to use exactly what we think can do make us the most money. Exactly. I'm not going to sit there and worry about a YouTube channel. 
trying to get, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just an afterthought. So that's where I'm like, Hey guys, this is, this is how I'm running my YouTube. I think what y'all are used to is what YouTube used to be like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think that that's right. So I'm trying to do stuff differently to really show people to show them what I think they should really be looking at rather than something that I think they can read in a magazine that sounds great. You're keeping it is real, it really man. That's, yeah, is it that's... really that good, though? I mean, hey, go throw a fluke on the grass. Well, well, I go throw a fluke on any lake in the country and catch a fish, but that's not, in my opinion, that's not what I would want to know if I was a kid. I would want to know, like, how's that guy going out there and catching those big bass mm -hmm. rather than, you know. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I agree with that. I, I think you're doing great. I think you're killing the game on YouTube. I love it. I, and and uh, from someone who's been doing, putting a lot of effort in for the last year, I know how how much work it takes to do this. It's yeah. a lot of work. I mean, just editing alone is it's ridiculous how much time you can spend doing little tiny things to make it what you think is going to be entertaining and better for them. And and I, you have my respect for sure because it's a pain. Well, no. It's a pain in my ass. I can tell you that. I mean, before we even good. you and I were talking before we started this, I was editing. I was editing at you know at nine o'clock this tonight here in Florida. It, it's just what it is. Okay, last question before I I let you go. And again, everyone go to Todd Castledine Fishing on YouTube. Check them out on on, on Facebook. Um, if you have a bucket list fish or a bucket list a bucket list place to go fishing, what are they? Um, so I've never been peacock bass fishing. Shut your mouth. No, I want to go down. I got a guy, oh, yeah. honestly, Yo, have down there. We in Orlando, I don't, but I have the single best guide I can put you with. His name's Hi. Uh, he's, he's, he's not a professional fisherman. He's a guide, but he would take you fishing for free in a millisecond. And he catches like the ones that have the big humps on them. The, the, right. one, the, the five, six pounders, those fish. And he catches them nonstop. The dude. I mean, he can flat out fish. So if you come down yeah, to Florida, yeah. I mean, if you come down to Flo Orlando, you got to stop and say hello to start off with. But and I'm a I'm a frog fisherman, right? So yeah. Like like that's like you know the pop and perch was it was my deal, and that's what we're out there today, just killing them on. So I'm like I'm a guy who wants to throw a top water everywhere I go. So that's just that's the one thing I, I've been wanting to go. Obviously down to the Amazon and do it, but I mean. I just want to go. That's how I want to go catch them. I want to go catch them on top. Yeah, they and crush just, and witness that stuff. Yeah, once and you just throw. I just want to throw a big bait until I cannot throw a big bait anymore. And my arm hurts. That's what I want to do. So we have them. Once you get to West Palm Beach here in Florida, from West Palm Beach south, they have stocked all the all the right. tributary, now, the canals. Yeah, and you. What's crazy is you'll go fish down there and you'll get a giant peacock, and then ten casts later you'll get. A really nice snook or tarpon and you'll be like what the hell is happening here and then uh, five minutes later you'll, be, you'll have a largemouth bass they're all okay. in these tributaries and they don't fish for them that much well i mean no not okay. that much but okay uh i think there's well when you go fish for them the, the bigger louder commotion baits that they are the better it, it is so there's certain areas that you that will hold the fish better than other areas, and learning that process is why, like high is the best guy down there. Okay. Uh, you you can go like I've I've got a spot that's behind a Walgreens in down in South Florida, and literally you would see this pond and you would go, that is shit. There's nothing in there, there, but as soon as your bait hits the water, I can promise you you'd have a two or three pound peacock bass on. Or if you or if you didn't, it would be a snook or a tarpon, and you and it's it's has no rhyme or reason. But then when you start looking how it's connected to other other canals, then you go, oh, that makes a lot more sense. Right. So you whenever you're if I mean, are you are you fishing the what op, are you fishing the southern opens or the easterns? Both. You Both. are. So yeah, I I missed you when you're down here uh, for. What it was, Harris Chain or no Kissimmee? 
Where was I? Kissimmee. Yeah. Toho. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because J- uh, John Cox was right down the street from me. Right. That's, okay. That's a, that's my boy. Um, but yeah, you were a l- you were still up a little bit ways. You needed to get down south. But if you I, if you come down, I'd love to 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 collab or take you fishing or do whatever, and and I'll send you south. With well, yeah, well, like I said, Florida. Now that I've started fishing, you know these things, I, I just don't see how I don't go to Florida every year. So yeah, you well, know, like the opens or the tour, the co- like. It, the last three years, I've been in Florida every year. So, which was is new to me. I've been down to Florida, but obviously not bass fishing. So, I mean, um, I'll be down in Florida. <laughs> I'll be down in Florida in July. I go down there to Pensacola every day. Wait till you see those videos. Oh, I'm finally gonna film this stuff. My daughter caught like a 30 pound red off the. Oh, uh, nice. Off the, oh yeah, we kept like, I get out there on the bank and just, I have figured out how to catch them down there. Yeah, red fish so, is fun. Red fishing's fun. Well, I catch I catch anything that bites down there, so I catch a lot of random weird big stuff. That's that, but yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, dude! I really appreciate the time tonight. Thank you very much. I know you've been slam busy and filming and stuff. I got to get your boy Brian. It's it's a Brian Upshaw, isn't it? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew Upshaw. Why do I think it's why do I? Th- I'd love to have him on the show Brian here Coleman. soon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and talk to him. But everyone need you need to go check out Todd Castledine fishing on the YouTube channel. Uh, and, and just enjoy what this man makes because he keeps it real and it's just awesome. So thank you very much for the time tonight. Thank you to your wife for putting up with me, by the way. And, uh, uh and, and really, I, I wish you all the best and, and keep safe and healthy and, and kill them out there, man. And let's see, I'd love to see you on the leads here soon. All right. Hey, and, and thanks for having me on. And man, I'm always down to do these. So anytime you want to, just holler at me. I will. I'm sure I got something else to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm going to hit finish and talk to you for a second off air. But thank you again. Hold on. All right. Well, there it was. Hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, I should tell you that our conversation after that interview lasted for another 45 minutes and I wish I could have recorded it but <clears throat> you know there was some st- some stuff that we talked about that just wasn't meant for the for everybody I guess that's the best best way I had some questions I wanted to ask he had some things he wanted to ask me and and really I found uh Todd to be just an absolutely genuine dude that I was very happy to to get with and to to t- talk to so uh, I'm going to run one commercial, and then when we get back, hopefully we're going to have uh, our boy, Captain Mike Ortigo. So while we do that, we're going to run the Tackle Webs commercial. So here you go. Hold on. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. Coming with us now is our boy, Captain Mike. Good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you, man? Good morning. Good this morning. Is 14 day, 4,500. <laughs> I just came out of my damn bunker to do this. I'm digging a hole in my backyard. <laughs> How are you, life. man? Where's Lo- Where's Lorelai? Let me say hi to Lorelai on the air. Lorelai, hi, beautiful. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. Uh, so. Looking forward to summer fishing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's. Distance learning thing. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it was, uh, this, this thing is still, hopefully we're on the, the downfall of this because this thing has been, uh, this thing is, is getting kind of ridiculous at this point in time. Yeah. It's 
call it a summer. Pull the pin, man. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so what's for them up early, I guess. Yeah. W- what about summer camps? What are we going to do with these kids during summer? I want this kid out of my house. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in a barge and just take kids on boats in the barge. Everybody can pay me to keep them on the, on the boat. <laughs> So, uh, what's been happening? I mean, I know you guys got a photo shoot for Tackle Webs coming up. What's what's what have you been we're doing this to week? Do it today, we were supposed to do it today. The weatherman said, you know, we got that front coming through, so we didn't want to mess up after you know putting everybody in there, getting camera people and equipment. And, you know, it's not just like going fishing. Yeah. So we'll see. We bumped it a couple of days. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we pull it off and it goes well. The video is much better on this. The audio is not as good. You should know that. Really? Yeah. But I, I can hear you, so that, that's all that matters. Um, we had Todd Castledean. Did you see a little bit of that with the hybrid hunter? I, I have some of those coming our way, which is going to be good news. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're working. We're going to – hopefully you're going to be with me and we can do some of these these things here at the house or at your house or at studio or someplace. That was a great interview, man. That's that's one of the awesome things about doing this kind of feed, live feed. Yeah. You get to really dive in with some guys and uh, you know do longer interviews and stuff like that. Yeah, I think having longer longer interviews is um, a little bit easier because uh, you can kind of kind of get into a rhythm without worrying about a commercial break or even or even swearing because I swore a couple times during it. Um, and I, I'll try not to, but it, I think it makes it a little bit easier. I, I think so. I think it came out fairly well. No, you did a good job. Yeah. You did a good job. So, so yeah, you got, it's, you know, it's, it's cool to see guys like that, and you know, that you're not maybe not 100 percent familiar with, with, and you know, I jumped on his YouTube, subscribed, and you know, now I'm gonna get to look into those things, and, and you know, that's what it's about, man. Exposure to the industry. So let me ask because. I had someone ask me today. There's some new accessories coming out for for tackle webs. Do we have a do we have a a, a, a guesstimate or an estimate on when we're going to see some new stuff? I know we have the new website we're working on, and but we're going to have some new accessories. Is there some stuff you can hint towards? Did I just lose you? How weird is that? Oh, the reconnecting. There's we got a- some uh, bags and stuff like that that are coming out. Yeah. Yeah, we have a poor connection feed for a weird. What is weird? I don't know why. You're you're just a stable face. So, oh, there you are. I think so. There you go. Lose you? Yeah, I lost you for a second. It was weird. So you have some new stuff coming out, correct? Yeah, we got some new things coming out. So we'll, uh, you know, things that people have been asking for. We're gonna check it out, and hopefully, we'll be able to roll some of these things out this year, and you know, be ready for next year. Hopefully, I gas goes well. And it's still on for next year, and we'll roll things out. Now, uh, but everything's touch and go, man. It's a it's a crazy time for the industry for sure. Are you finding that you're are you able to get all the materials that you normally get uh, to build the the bags? Or are you having a hard time getting stuff now? Those are choked up. Um, you know, everything's going into small face masks. Yeah. Uh, PPP stuff. Um, you know, all those things. There's a lot of assets being put in there. They're getting you know, things are bottled up, freight, you know, freight trucks are getting bottled up. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot, it's a difficult thing, man. Across the board, you know, you go to some of these retail shops and you see how empty they are in their shelves. We talked about it on Sunday. Uh, I was driving around looking for a specific lure on Sunday and I went to five or six academies and the shelves at Academy were pretty much, now I don't want to say empty, but... 80% of their stock was gone. I mean, there weren't even pl- soft plastic baits on one of them. Yeah, it's, it's a tough time, man. It's a tough time. And guys, are, you know, now people aren't working as much. They're getting outdoors. They're separating. So fishing is, is a great opportunity to do that instead of going to the theater or yeah. checking out concerts and stuff that you can't do anymore. Now, you know, you're going out on the boat. And, you know, there's, I've been hearing boat sales are up. And across the people... I can tell you the ramps are hammered, man. I know. And across the state, for sure. I don't know, you know, out of the state of Florida, but I know in the state of Florida, there's lines getting out. Lines. It, it's it's almost ridiculous. Especially on the weekend. Every weekend's a holiday weekend now, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 really crazy. And and you're start. Have you started working on the the project boat? I mean, have you? What, what what's the update on the the boat? Have you been able to work? I know you're always working tackle webs, but do you get to get out there for a couple hours during the week and at least give it some love? Yeah, we're we're uh, everything's in a in a planning stage right now. So I'm, I'm you know we're gonna approach it as you know I'm making a list of everything I want. You know, one of these dream lists, and I'm gonna have to whittle it down. I'm gonna look at budget, yeah, see what needs to be done, and, and see if we can't stage it, and then you know get the essentials I need, and then also look in and see, you know, where's the best way to buy certain things? Yeah, you know, where do we get these things manufactured? And so this whole process will hopefully come together really nice in a cool, you know, small mini series type deal, and um, you know, something that'll come out and produce a really cool boat that. You can fish the heck out of them, and we're going to tr- really tear up some fish with, yeah. and take it around the state and see some, you know, do some cool things with it. But also, you know, if you take the kids out. You know, we got the star tournament starting in July. Where you know we've been fishing it for the last couple of summers. We've got the kids here; they're all excited to get out. Yeah. Those tournaments and those events, and but it's something I got to take the family with. So you know, there's some aspects to that you got to take into consideration when we're playing in the south and I, hopefully you know that'll that'll help you know some get people out there that are you know maybe have an issue with their boat or something they're looking to do and they're kind of how do i go about doing it or you know what does it cost or that kind of thing have you have you talked to any of uh because you, you're you're a fishing guide have you talked to any guides and how this whole corona corona 19 is affecting their livelihood and uh, and they're fishing have you talked to anybody that's that's having that's out there i mean like phil yeah, what, so how's captain phil doing phil's doing okay he's he's not they're not the charters aren't where they need to be um you know there's guys that live in recreational areas okay so panama city beach is a prime example for that yeah you know their time is and this is across the state of florida our times for charter fishing is spring break you know, through the summer, and you know, you got guys down in the Keys, and all this is dependent on on travel and tourism dollars coming in, and then guys that are going out, even here in Orlando, guys that come into Disney, they have you know timeshares in here. They'll they'll go fishing for a couple of days and do the parks for a couple of days while the wife goes to Millennium Mall or, and goes shopping. Yeah, guys in Panama City Beach, you know, they're they're counting on they need tourism dollars to come in. They need to fill those hotel rooms so that. They go out and eat dinner, and you know, not only that, they're going to come out and go charter fishing, renting boats and everything. Down in the Keys, they completely shut it down to all guests. Yeah. So only residents. So there's a huge effort there to try to get things rolling again, and actually a lot of you know, GoFundMe's and charter raffles and stuff like that to try to raise money for the guys down there, and that's across the board. So there's a lot of, I mean, it, it trickles down to everybody. Yeah. You know, from the industry and. Not only, you know, that's you know our charter boat and fishing industry, but it's you know it's all over the you know it's all over from you know, yeah from everything's the, affected. From it. I can only fishing I can only imagine giving those fish those fish on the flats a little bit of a break. What they're going to do when it it is time to get down there, or or even imagine what mini season's going to be like this year, uh, because they've had two or three months of not getting run over and stuff like that wouldn't you think it'd be on fire when it is available the season's closed right now but if they're still shut down and come mini season so they're trying to open some things up in the keys but they haven't opened it to, to guess okay so i mean come july you know last wednesday thursday of july if that mini season isn't open that's a that's a huge economical hit to yeah and all the florida keys but yeah, those you know the lobster will have a break on it, and the commercial guys will be able to you know, yeah. crank on it. Yeah, I don't. But you know, I think I think the fishing, you know, fishing down there probably they'll have less pressure. But up here, I can tell you that the water's down, boats are running around all over the place. There's yahoos all over. Yeah. That are running flats and hitting things, and um, you know, it's it's a. Uh, like the show out there sure. the water's very down right now i mean most of the ponds and the little places i go fishing um are feet down i mean feet down and it 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 sucks um 
And I'm not seeing a lot of bait fish either. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, shad or anything like that happening either. But, you know, hopefully we can get over this. Time of year. Yeah. Once this weather starts warming up. Yeah, when warm when it warms up. Uh, having said that, I know Red Ed got four cobia yesterday. So yeah, there's been a lot of dolphin being caught. Yeah, in Miami and, and down in the Keys, there's been some good dolphin. I know I had buddies catching, you know, some pretty good snapper down there, and caught a couple of sailfish and black tunas out of the port here. Guys have been going to the other side on good days and catching, you know, yellowfins. Mm -hmm. uh, up even up in uh, in Jacksonville, I've got some buddies up there. They've been running out and. You know, 400, 450, 500 feet of water catching nice mahi up there, too. So, yeah, it's still, it's still good, man. It's still fishing. It's yeah, just, you got to be safe. Got to, you know, watch watch your surroundings and make sure you know whoever's driving like a maniac out there is trying to keep away from them. And, yeah. So. Well, excellent. Well, uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I appreciate you coming on. You'll be the first person next week, like normal. What were you doing out of curiosity okay. when I called you at three? I can't talk about. There's some issues, some things I got to deal with. <laughs> okay. Some stuff. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. It's a yeah. It's just it's a it's a big machine we're investing in. We just had it. Oh uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, everyone, you need to go to Tackle Web's new website. We're gonna. I think we're gonna be testing it over the next couple of days to make sure the the payment thing works because I was working on that this afternoon. Uh, make sure we can make it. Paid, <laughs> I, I, I'm making sure. I'm actually gonna. Well, I'll tell you afterwards. I'm gonna charge myself and just, you know, don't. You don't have to send it to me. <laughs> but uh, we haven't. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had to handle. I, well, I didn't get a hand deliver. I made sure I gave the stuff to to Marcella for you. So, uh, but I'm glad she got. I didn't think you were gonna get it till tomorrow or Friday, but I'm glad you got it. So we're going to go to Tackle Webs. Why don't you lead us out and tell everybody what they should be doing since I haven't done it since we got here. Get your fish on. See you guys later. Thank you, Mike. Later.